Paid for opposition research that led to the Russia dossier that accused the Trump campaign of collusion with the Russians. Joining us now to discuss all this, Congressman Trey Gowdy, chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Chairman, let's start with the report from several news outlets that the first uh, Mueller charges will be announced tomorrow. As a former federal prosecutor yourself, what will you be looking for? Um, well, first of all, Chris, we don't know who's being charged. Let's assume arguendo the reporting is true. We don't know who's being charged. We don't know what they're being charged for. We don't know the time period. Um, I will tell you this. The only conversation I've had with Robert Mueller, it was stressing to him the importance of, of cutting out the leaks with respect to serious investigations. So it, it is kind of ironic that the people charged with investigating the law and executing the law would violate the law. And make no mistake, disclosing grand jury ma material is a violation of the law. So as a former prosecutor, I'm disappointed that you and I are having the conversation because somebody violated their oath of secrecy. Let's handicap this, though, if you will, sort of expert analysis. As a federal prosecutor, you're quite right. We do not know who's being charged and what they're being charged for. What, if anything, when we find that out, whether it's somebody close to the president, somebody further down, whether it's something related to Russia, or whether it's, what in effect, an extraneous charge, not to say it's not a legitimate charge, but something like fraud or, or, or money laundering, what will that tell us about the Mueller investigation? Well, that little phrase um, in the memo from Rod Rosenstein, uh, arose or may arise from the investigation. I mean, the reason you have that phraseology is if special counsel finds evidence of a crime that's unrelated to his or her original jurisdiction, you don't ignore it. Uh, but it's going to be really important whether or not uh, this indictment involves 15-year-old business transactions or 15-day-old conversations uh, w w with Russia. So it's really important what the charge is. It's really important who the person being charged is. I, one thing I don't get that excited about, although I do see a lot of reporting, is somehow or another you're going to be able to flip a witness and that witness is going to turn state's evidence on, on, on everyone else. If you didn't believe a witness yesterday, chances are great you're not going to believe that witness tomorrow, particularly if they're under indictment and have a reason to curry favor with the government. These investigations come down to documents and evidence much more so than they do witness testimony. So I would caution your viewers, don't get too excited that all of a sudden the government now has a star witness. Uh, that star witness you probably didn't believe a week ago and you won't believe a week from now. There have been growing calls from some Republicans to end the Mueller investigation. Some people say he's too close to Comey and the FBI and that he ought to resign. Some people say that when the Mueller budget uh, for the special counsel investigation is presented to Congress to review next month, that they should cut off funding. Do you support any effort to either curtail or end the Mueller investigation? I don't, um, and I uh, readily concede I'm in an increasingly small uh, group of Republicans. Um, I think Bob Mueller uh, has a really distinguished career of service to our country. Uh, I don't think any of your viewers can think of a single thing he did as the FBI director that caused them to have a lack of confidence in him. I think most of your viewers have to be reminded that he actually was the FBI director or that he actually was a U.S. attorney because he's a pretty apolitical guy. Um, I, I, I see the reporting. I see the same thing you're making reference to, that he and Comey are friends. I, I'm not really sure what the definition of that is. I've got a lot of coworkers that it wouldn't stop me from investigating them or prosecuting them. So they're not family members. They weren't business partners. Um, I, I, I would encourage my Republican friends, give the guy a chance to do his job. It, it, the result will be known by the facts, by what he uncovers. The personalities involved are much less important to me than the underlying facts. So I, I, would, I would say give the guy a chance to do his job. Let's turn to the revelation this week that it turns out that the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee paid for the opposition research that led uh, to the writing, the formulation of this Russia dossier that uh, has made all kinds of accusations against President Trump and his campaign. What do you think is the significance of that revelation? 
Well, one of the uh, areas of significance, Chris, is just how hard the Democrats in Congress fault Republicans for trying to gain access to this information. If it were up to Adam Schiff and other Democrats, who, of course, want all the facts to come out, they want all the facts of Russia to come out, except who financed the dossier. So uh, that's the most important thing to me, is how um, unserious the Democrats in the House have been about uncovering all the facts. I am interested in who paid for the dossier, because that helps you understand motive and intent and whether or not you can rely on the document. I am much more interested in whether or not the Department of Justice and the FBI relied upon that dossier in initiating a counterintelligence investigation or in court filings. That is really important to me. I don't expect the DNC to be objective. Um, almost by definition, opposition research is not objective. I do expect an entity represented by a blindfolded woman to be objective, and if they relied on that dossier and they didn't corroborate it, uh, or vet it, um, then we have a serious issue, and that's the next thing that House Intel um, is trying to find out, but, but, is whether or not the U.S. government relied on it. Yeah, let me ask you about that, because you're, you, what, the two points you're making, and I agree, these are two very important questions. Did the FBI base its original investigation, at least in part of the dossier, and when you talk about court representations, that's the, the, the possibility that they use the dossier to convince a FISA court to allow uh, the FBI to wiretap uh, people in Trump world, Trump associates. Uh, do you have any evidence of that? I understand the investigation is just beginning. Well, actually, the investigation is not just beginning. We've been trying for a long time to get the Department of Justice to give us access to this information. It frankly took the Speaker of the House uh, this week to tell the Department that we're not going away. Um, you know, Chris, people don't like it when I say this, but it's actually true. It's sometimes hard to tell the difference between the Obama Department of Justice and the current Department of Justice in terms of transparency and their willingness to share information with Congress. This is a really simple request. Did you rely on the dossier? And if so, did you vet it before you relied upon it? You can answer that in 30 seconds, but it's taken three months for the Department of Justice, and only recently have they agreed to give us the information. So the battle is not just with House Democrats, unfortunately, it's also with the Department of Justice to gain access to the information we need to wrap up this investigation. What about the fact that the Clinton campaign and the DNC, uh, which paid $12 million to the law firm Perkins Cole that, that, that paid for the opposition research that led to the dossier, that in the FEC filings it simply says $12 million to Perkins Cole, the law firm, for legal work. Uh, no mention of the fact that it was also paying for oppo research that went to Christopher Steele, a former British intelligence agency agent that went to the, to the Kremlin, the, not the money to the Kremlin, but his investigation. As I understand it, that, that willful misrepresentation uh, of campaign expenditures is a criminal offense. Well, I'm not an election law expert, Chris, but the good news is you don't have to be uh, to understand uh, the absurdity of believing that you can launder all of your campaign money by just hiring a law firm. I, I mean, uh, imagine if you and I were running for Congress and we just hired a law firm and said, hey, you go do all the oppo, you go buy all the television, you go buy all the bumper stickers, you go hire all the experts, and we're going to launder all of this through a law firm. I can't think of anything that defeats the purpose of transparency laws more than that. So I am interested in that, and I am also interested in sharing some memory tricks uh, with folks at the DNC, because no one can remember who paid $10 million to a law firm to do oppo research. I find that stunning. $10 million, and no one can remember who authorized it, who approved it, um, who said, yeah, this is a really good idea. So you got two issues, a memory issue and then the lack of transparency by laundering money through a law firm. We're, we're running out of time, and I want to ask you two more questions. One is that uh, you also have begun an investigation into the 2010 Uranium One deal. This was the deal under which 20% uh, of America's uranium reserves ended up going to a Russian government agency. Uh, Hillary Clinton responded this week to, to all of this talk about her. I'd like to play the clip of, of her. The closer the investigation about real Russian ties between Trump associates and real Russians, the more they want to just throw mud on the wall and I'm their favorite target, me and, you know, 
President Obama. We're the ones that they always like to put into the crosshairs. So Secretary Clinton and other Democrats are saying that you and the Republicans are ju just trying to shift the conversation. Well, Chris, all the way back in 2010, Peter King and Ross, uh, uh, Ileana Ross Layton, two of my colleagues on the House Intel Committee, sent a letter to CFIUS trying to better understand uh, this transaction. Uh, in 2015, the House Oversight Committee also wrote the Obama administration trying to understand uh, what CFIUS did, whether or not they had all the information. But, but Chris, also keep in mind, we've spent most of 2017 trying to better understand what Russia did to this country in 2016. Not to the Democrats, not to the Republicans, but to this country. So what we know is that Russia was not our friend in 2016. It's not that big of a leap to ask, I wonder if they were our friends in 2010. That's not that big of a leap. It, it, it wasn't Republicans who gave the reset button to Russia. It wasn't Republicans who said we'll have more flexibility in a second term. It was a Republican named Mitt Romney who said Russia was our greatest threat, and the Democrats laughed at him. So, okay. yes, I do want to know if the same group that tried to sabotage our democracy in 2016 is buying uranium in 2010. Yeah, I want to know that. Okay, two quick questions to wrap this up. On the one hand, given the revelations about the fact that the DNC and the Clinton campaign paid for this, the Russia dossier, in effect, do we at this moment have harder evidence of collusion between Clinton and the Russians than we do about Trump and the Russians? You know, Chris, there, there are five words that start with C. Collusion, coordination, conspiracy, contact, and coincidence. And, and where this falls out in those five C's, I don't know. Uh, the word collusion has a criminal connotation to it. I think uh, the, the premise of your question is, is, is accurate. Uh, for a long time, we've heard about all the ties between the Trump campaign and Russia, for which there is no evidence. And lo and behold, despite serious Democrat opposition, we have uncovered uh, that the DNC was working with Russian actors to try to uh, besmirch Donald Trump's reputation. So it's certainly interesting whether it's collusion, coincidence, coordination, I don't know yet. Right. And <laughs> very briefly, we do know that, as you point out, the key is the Russians did interfere. They did hack the DNC files. They did hack and put out information about John Podesta's files. Don't we need to get to the bottom of that, too? Uh, I've spent the better part of 2017 doing that, including interviewing three witnesses last week, and I got a bunch more this week. Yeah, Russia's not our friend. WikiLeaks is not our friend. Julian Assange is not our friend. They tried to attack the fundamentals of our democracy, and that's what I've spent 2017 focusing on. That, to me, is an American issue. I wish the Democrats would help a little bit more instead of reading the Moscow phone book during the witness interviews, trying to see whether Jared Kushner knows a guy named Igor. I wish they'd help. But, but that's been my focus in 2017, is understanding that Russia tried to subvert our democracy. Uh, and, and, and it'd be great if my Democrat friends helped a little bit. Chairman Gowdy, thank you. Thanks for your time. And we will follow all the investigations in coming days, sir.